Hello everyone, welcome to my oil weathering tutorial. In this tutorial I want to show you how I go about and weather my models with oil, oil paints. Um, and first I wanted to say that this is the way I weather my models, um, you know, my personal way. So, of course, you know, with oils it's pretty much infinite what you can do uh, and how you can weather a model. So, I mean, it's through experimentation and um, lots of um, trial and error that you really get to to do and to learn and to use these um, techniques as uh, as you are as you want to and to achieve the effects that you wish to. So you can go to the very basic, which is what I do. I use my oil weathering techniques to a very simple extent uh, to add some pre-dusting. Um, dirtying up some parts, um, achieving some contrast between some, you know, plates and, and, and trying and really uh, bring out some of the details. Or you can basically use it to do every step of the weathering, even the weathering steps that are traditional, such as uh, streaking and grime and um, all types of, of um, even whitewashes and all that. You can do practically everything with oils as long as you have the patience and the time to do it. I prefer to work at it as just another stage of weathering. But for example, if you read Mike Rinaldi's books, uh, you get to the very um, concrete idea that he does a wonderful job of oil rendering. And he actually gets to a point of doing practically, you know, all the steps, um, all the grime, all the dirt, all the streaking, everything you need to do, the rust, it's pretty much done with 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 oils to an extent. So, I mean, you take you can take this as far as you want to, and um, or apply it as basically as you want to. So I'll leave that part up to you, and hopefully uh, this will be of some use to to your to your oil weathering techniques. As for the materials, um, we're going to be using a, an assortment of oil colors. Now, I've been reading a bit about this, and I've heard in many sources that the Abteilung oils are the best for this, and, and they are specifically made for modeling, they're finer pigment and all that. I have no idea. I don't own a single Abteilung oil color, so I have no idea. So I cannot say by experience. but. You know, I'm going to use what I have at hand. I paint in oils, so um, I have a, an assortment of several color, oil colors, which I'm going to use for modeling, and I usually use for modeling. And um, maybe because I don't use the oils to a like really big extent, these have always worked out for me pretty well, so I'm not complaining. I'm going to stick to these. As for the colors themselves, I'm going to use an assortment of uh, browns, uh, ochres, uh, one orange, one gray, and one yellow. Um, also some reddish browns and, you know, basically earth tones that you can use along with a few uh, stronger tones such as uh, orange or yellow that you can do to mix with other uh, colors and provide, you know, like rust tones or certain, type of, certain types of highlights as well. As for the palette itself, where I'm going to uh, put my oils while I'm working, I'm going to use the tried and tested cardboard palette. The reason behind this is that the cardboard will soak up the oils, the extra oils that come with the oil colors, and does provide us with a quicker drying time for our uh, oils on the model, And because, you know, oil itself is a very... Um, uh, it takes a long time to dry, so this will speed up our, our process and allow us to build up several layers if we want to in a faster way. Another thing I'm going to use is besides the usual white spirit to wash your brush, for the uh, application of the oils on the surface of the model, I do um, advise this low odor solvent uh, Sans odor or something like that, which I bought from Winsor Newton, and it's far better than white spirit to apply in your model. Not only it will be um, 
have a bigger, um, longer um, drying time, which means you have much more time to work with the, the, the solvent and the oils. It also will give you a better finish and um, its texture is a bit different from white spirit. White spirit is extremely liquid, tends to run off real fast. Sensador, I've found it's a little bit more oily, so to speak, and it kind of works better with oils. So I would advise you to use this if possible. If not, you can use white spirit. I've used it before and it's it, it works. Um, Although I think this one is much better. So these will be the materials. The brushes I'm going to use are fairly good. They're not awesome, but they're fairly good quality. So that should be important. You shouldn't use too much of a damaged brush or anything because you will need smooth transitions and, and a lot of stippling with care and to a fine detail. Uh, so. I would advise you to use pretty good brushes for this for this work. Um, so let's get on with this and I hope you like this tutorial and it's useful for you. So I'm going to exemplify just a few um, parts of the vehicle. I'm not going to do the whole vehicle and uh, film it because it's, it's, it's too long. And actually, you can see how I do it very easily. It's it's not going to be a um, it's not a different uh, sorry it's not a difficult technique. So it's very easy. So I think if I show you just a couple of examples, uh, you can pretty well see how I do it. And if you're um, interested in this technique, it's mostly practicing that you'll get there instead of just watching. So let's start with um, this plate here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to darken a few parts, mixing a few tones. And I don't need much, much of it. All I need is then to go in and apply it to places where there is shadow or where there could be somewhat of a um, dirt gathering or some place I want just to kind of accentuate um, and differentiate um, the shadows or the colors. I then go with a wide brush and wet it in the low odor solvent and retrieve the excess off even it just dampen and then what I do is I kind of stipple it and drag it a bit around until it kind of gets to where I, I want it to be. Now remember we want subtle effects we don't want them to be very very um, visible we want them to be sort of felt not exact, exactly seen when you look at the vehicle. So we're not looking for extreme um, effects. Uh, well, not on this part of the vehicle. And this is what I'm doing is, I can call it as a pre-shade in a way, because what I'm going to do is like basically um, mess with some values And then, and only then, I'm going to do some actual effects. So this is more like a filter right now. At least on that part. Here, I'm going to apply a little bit more. The stippling motion. I want to contrast those two parts. And I'll slowly I'll work my way into the blending of this color. So 
So slowly I'm going to blend it in, make a sort of a gradient. And at the same time, I'm applying some variety to the vehicle. Tonal variety, as you can see it's a bit more reddish here and there. And I'll just need to blend it in slowly, patiently. This is actually more, it's easier than it looks. But you have to be patient, that you really have to be patient. Slowly just blend it in. And as you can see, we have changed somewhat of the values. You can actually see more of the difference between the different plates, and that's part of what we want. Now I'm going to apply a different lighter tone to the top of this superstructure here. So I'm going to blend in this color. As you can see, this has made the look of the vehicle change a bit, and that's exactly what we want. So another use for these uh, oil rendering techniques are to add shadows to certain places selectively and enhance their um, appearance. So we can just drop some dark umber here and enhance that little shadow there. At the same time it's like building up dirt and gives you an extra layer of depth when you're uh, weathering later on. Remember go for subtlety as much as you can but if need be you can actually add more to the um, to the rendering as you can see now that it's dried this part is very subtly modulated and um, shaded with different tones and it's kind of getting different from these parts where I did not use oils now mind this you can take this as far as you want to I could do streaks, I could do any type of staining and all that. Um, I will basically do shadows and um, maybe some dust, but I usually don't go, um, I don't do more than that. But that I leave that to your choice, I mean, you, you, you do whatever you feel like doing. The sky's the limit with oils and you can practically do all the effects of weathering with oils um, if you're skilled enough and if you're patient enough and if you're uh, if this is your system this is the system that works for you so now I'll weather these uh, parts here of the fender and um, maybe add some further shading to this part here and then we'll go to the top of the superstructure and weather that part <music>
So here is the first part of the lower hull weathering. Now I'm going to work on the front portion of the side lower hull and um, make up some con contrasts and then we'll return to this portion here later on when it's dried. That's how you give some depth to your uh, to your model through the wonder of oils. is It is very subtle as you can see, but definitely there is a difference in the depth that you can achieve with um, oil effects and um, the oil rendering techniques. It's rather interesting and the way it works is also very intuitive so i um urge you to try this technique and now we will go to the upper portion of the superstructure and we will deal with the roof of the of the superstructure So I'm now going to work on the top of the superstructure and I'm going to use some light and dark tones to um, bring to life uh, some of the detail on the top of the superstructure such as the, hat the hatches and the viewports. Um, I'm also going to um, lay the foundation of further weathering by adding some grime and some uh, sort of uh, wear and tear to it. and thus beginning the uh, weathering process at the top of the superstructure.
I'm going to work on the highlights. So I hope you have enjoyed this tutorial and I hope I have helped you to realize how easy and intuitive these techniques can be as well as uh, how powerful they are. Uh, I think that as a fa either as a foundation or as a full-fledged weathering tool it is a very powerful uh, tool to have in, in the modeler's arsenal and I think it may very well be the tool to tell your model's story and to make it more compelling and powerful. I also would like to state that um, one of the most important and key factors to weathering is the layering of uh, the weathering techniques. So consecutive layering of subtle uh, effects uh, end up by providing a full-on realistic weathering uh, effect to your model but I stress the subtle aspect of it because if you overdo it in every layer you'll end up with a very darkened and very um, very over the top um, weathering so I want to urge you to um, go about and experiment with this technique I cannot stress enough the importance of practicing. It is very important to try different methods and uh, even make mistakes and, and you know find out what really best suits your style and your way of uh, weathering. Uh, this said, I hope this was of uh, some use to you guys and um, have fun. And I see you on the next tutorial. Keep modeling.